Okay, I am really upset right now with YouTube. Um, I recorded this not two times. I recorded a half an hour one, and I recorded a 20 minute one. The first one, the audio was wrong. The second one, YouTube failed to upload it. Um, so I'm going to redo this again. Because, yeah. Um, so hi. Uh, I've, I have, I'm speaking a conlang. Conlang is a constructed language, and uh, I call it Theodian. It's the national language of my co my micronation Theodia, uh, so I'm Theodian. Um, and so I've I've been um been thinking through different ways to try and make the number system a little bit better for the language. Okay, so um got this little agenda here that I'm going through. So I was uh, one of the first things I did is, is I was I started questioning was base ten the best base for this language? Um and so. I went and I did a whole bunch of you know research uh, one night, a little bit after that, and um, I so I came upon a Dozenal, uh, Dozenal's base twelve, and, and I learned uh, from the Dozenal Society of America and with, you know, some other stuff. Uh, it's a very actually it's a very nice base, especially when you're doing fractions. Like for example, in decimal, de uh, decimal, when you, uh, that's base ten, when you want to say um, uh, one third, you get point three 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 three, and doesn't all it's just point four. It's very easy, and point, uh, one third is actually a very common fraction. And to not have that be regular, like literally every third number in decimal is irregular. Um, uh, not irregular. I mean, it uh, repeats is what I mean. I mean, of course it repeats very regularly because uh, ten is next to nine, and nine is well, that's more complex. I don't need to explain that, but. Uh, basically, doesn't all repeats less, and it's nice for that. Um, it's it's easier to do. My kids messed up. Uh, but it's easier to do halves in decimal too. Uh, not decimal. Doesn't all too because like say in decimal you want to divide um, ten by two. Yeah, you know one o. That's what what one o is. One o is ten in base ten. Uh, divide by, by, by two, you get five. And divide that by two, you have to go to two point five. Divide that by two. I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, in doesn't all. If you want to divide 1 o by 2, uh, that's 12, you get 6, and then you get 3, and then you get 1.6, and then you get... So, like, it, it's very, it's very much, it's a little bit easier to do halves and decimal. It doesn't all. I keep saying decimal. doesn't all. Um, and it's even easier to do thirds, like I was saying. So you have uh, a third, point four, a sixth uh, would be uh, point 0.2, uh, a, not, wait, a twelfth would be point 0.1. Um, and also four and three have this really unique relationship. But anyways, I won't spend too much time on what doesn't all is. You can learn that from the internet. Um, but yeah, so we're using doesn't all and the measurement system and stuff. It'll all be doesn't all too. Um, so like for example, days are twelve hours long. Um, and yeah, so um, and also I learned about ternary, which is base three. Um. Turns out E, the natural number, has the lowest radix economy, which is a fancy way of saying it's the most efficient base for like computer stuff. And um, uh, turns out ternary has some really u interesting uses in logic. Um, so ternary logic versus the boolean plus binary logic that you're probably familiar with. Binary uses true and false, where, uh, whereas ternary uses true, maybe, and false. So like maybe is like the null value. Like you don't exactly know if it's true or false. This has interesting implications in many different fields. Like legally, for example, uh, in, in Veodia, you wouldn't have just guilty and not guilty. You'd have guilty, maybe you don't know, and not guilty. Um, and some other stuff. So it's pretty simple, but it's it can be pretty ground shifting uh, in some uh, some areas. So um, and that's actually uh, uh, strewn about in the language. So. Every a lot of things that are binary in English, you know, uh, is are ternary in Theodian. So instead of going, like, I'm going there, I'm not going there. You know, I'm null going there. I know you can say, yeah, I know you can express that in English, but we in Theodian we're gonna have a specific morpheme uh, just to express, like, a, a specific bound morpheme just to express the idea of null as well as the idea of not. So it it makes it much more apparent. And one of the things that you you look out more for when you're speaking Theodian versus when you're speaking English, um, and remember everything's linguistic relative because linguistic relative is zero. So 
Theodian is very much designed to be an ergonomic language that is use, using some interesting um, uh, con conceptual programs that I installed into it. Um, so uh, I'm going to continue though with uh, numbers. So we've discussed, like I said, base. We have base three for logic, really balanced ternary, which is Google that. You'll like it. It's cool. Um, and we use decimal for the base. So um, and also uh, I wanted to make the endianness uh, more regular. So if, um, if you don't know what endianness is, basically it uh, just d defines whether or not the thing at the end in an ordered list is um, whether it's small, whether it's the smallest thing or the biggest thing. So w way we typically do hiccups. Okay. The way we normally do math is not hiccups, but we um, we do little endians. So we have 123, um, with 3 being the smallest and 100 being the biggest. Um, where, uh, uh, that's how we write it. Uh, some languages actually do it the other way around, so they would have 3 and 20 and 100, and that's how they would do it. So, um, like German, for example, uh, has big endian for the first two uh, places, but then it goes back to little endian again. So it's actually mixed endian. Um, Theodian is very strictly little endian, and also endianness can be uh, related, uh, can be considered like analogous to uh, head uh, placement, uh, the head initial. Well, anyways, little endian is head initial basically, and big endian is basically head final. And because math and theodian is very obsessively head initial, uh, math and theodian is also obsessively head initial. Um, so. Um, what, what that means, basically, if you aren't trained in linguistics or you don't know what a head initiality parameter, I think that's what they call it, but is, is um, basically you have a phrase, and in this fr noun, it's a noun phrase, and in this noun phrase you have a noun, and you have a determiner, and you have an adjective. So let's say the green horse, which doesn't make any sense, the brown horse. Let's say the brown horse, which makes more sense. So we have the brown horse. We have the, which is a determiner, and we have, uh, my hand's over here because it's up right to left, and for me it's left right for you. So the is a determiner brown is an adjective, and horse is the noun. And the noun here is the head of the noun phrase. Um, so in a head initial noun phrase, well, stri a very strictly head initial one, we have horse, brown, b, uh, as opposed to a head final one, like we have in English, the brown horse. Um, and although the Theoden language itself is normally mixed headedness, uh, like a pretty much every language out there except for like Japanese, which I think is still a little bit mixed, but it's pretty obsessively head final. Um, but anyways, uh, but just in math, Theodine is obsessively head initial. So, um, and the reason I did that, like I said, little endian is head initial. And it also makes sense because of the way we traditionally do math anyways. We say, we have, we write initial velocity as velocity initial. Um, so we're just going to say velocity initial, and that's how it is in Theodian. Uh, so it makes more sense. Um, and we also do that with units. No, we don't. Never mind. Oh, anyways. So, yeah, there's that. Oh, and it's an example of endianness and mixed bases in other languages. The state of numerals, considering the number 91. English, 91. Spanish, 90 and 1. German, 1 and 90. Older Englishes, 4 score and 11. French, four twenties, eleven. Danish, one in four score plus half the fifth score. So, a lot of those actually are base twenty. Um, older Englishes, four score and eleven is basically base twenty. Um, four twenties, eleven in French is base twenty, and it wouldn't be that big of a deal if we weren't using a base ten positional system and the rest of the language wasn't also base ten. Um, and although it used to be even more base 20, but it's just been getting increasingly base 10. And some countries are uh, use huitons and nantes um, instead of 420-11, so I like them better. But um, and then Danish is basically a, a, a big endian, or it might be mixed. I don't know how exa a whole lot about, about Danish, but it's big or mixed endian non-positional base 12 system. Um, and but they're using a base 10 a little Indian base 10 positional system. So it's not a good match, um, but like I said, Theodian's going to be um, very strictly, it's going to be very, very schematic and sensible, and it's going to be awesome.
And my voice is getting sore because I actually have an alto voice, and I'm talking like a baritone sort of, so it hurts my voice after a while. Like I said, I've been talking for an hour, an hour about this because I've had to redo it so much, my voice is getting a little bit sore. And so I might go up here, which is actually where my voice naturally is, but I'm going to try to keep it down here because so that I don't get to knock people off of their comfort zone. I don't personally mind having an alto voice, but anyway. Uh, so, uh, one day I was thinking, I'm gonna have to go a bit higher, okay, one day I was thinking about the cell and do the syntax for Theridian, and, um, those, oh, I think it's the syntax, you know, how I'm gonna put the numbers together in spoken speech, so, like, in English we have, like, 192, and that's just how we string it together, uh, in Theridian I was trying to figure out how I'm going to get those strung together, so, um, I was walking around, I was thinking about this, and suddenly this idea, like, epiphany, it just, well, not epiphany, insight, I believe what we would call it in psychology, I got the idea, numerical case, and basically what it is, is in each number I have uh, two phones, phones being sound, um, and each phone inflects for a different thing, so the first phone, which is always a consonant, because all the numbers, oh my god, <sighs> wow, okay, because all the numbers are C basic CV structure phonetically, but not phonologically, it's late, I mix them up sometimes, um, but I know what they are, okay, Phonetics versus phonology. Back to what I was saying. So, basic C V structure, the C inflex for C being consonant, the vowel being V being vowel. Uh, the C inflex for um sorry, lost my train of thought. <laughs> the C inflex for the uh, digit value, so like one or two or three or four, etc. And then the vowel inflex for the place of the number and the position of the system. So um, uh, if I'm gonna say one, I'd say T. T the T means one, and E means the one place. If I were going to say uh, twenty-one, I'd have um, Le Li. Uh, L being two, A being the twelfth place or the tens place in decimal, um, and then T being one, the ones place. Um, and then the way the um, so yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. So basically, all, every number, no matter where it is, is always a single syllable and always the same structure as other ones, so you don't get oddities, like 7, 11. Those don't match the numbers around them. Uh, they should be single syllable. They should have elf, like German, and uh, just says, or then, or something. I don't know, but... Um, they and they're all very, very regular single syllable. And the um, the way that the the vowels that are used to inflect for the position, um, a, a, and e, um, they make a lot of sense. I mean, phonosemant the very somewhat phonosemantically sane. I'm using the more open, broad vowel to represent the larger positional value. So I have, like the um, the hundredth position uses a, the twelfth position uses a, the ones position uses e. E sounds smaller than a. Pretty simple. So instead of having to memorize A is this, A is this, E is this, you memorize, oh, okay, so the more broad the con the vowel is, the bigger it is, and the more close it is, the smaller it is. Which is uh, really great, it should make it easier for children learning math if they're learning in Theodian, I don't know if the language will ever take off, but you never know, I mean, Esperanto, right? Um, so... Yeah, and then if you want to say, say you want to say a huge number and it's like a fuckload of zeros and you don't want to say zero a million, million, million times. So like, so you have the number one million. What you would, well, we do have in Theodian uh, yawns, but besides yawns, in Theodian we have um, these, uh, we have, I don't have a name for it yet because I don't know what it's officially called. But basically, you know how like we have the commas and we have the three things in the comma, and there's a comma, and then there's another three things, and a comma, and there's another three things, and the first three things uh, are nothing, and the second three things are a thousand, the next thing is a million, then zillion, then trillion, then quadrillion, etc. And Theodian, we just use ooh, and that's sort of the inflectional thing. And then we put one of the digit values in front of that, uh, so like thousand is two, and then million is lu, then su, etc. So basically, what it is is the uh, tu basically means first comma, and then lu means second comma, etc. And this is expandable. This uh, this supports up to twelve to the power of twelve 
uh, zeros. Um, and if that's not enough for you, it does expand further. You just say tool and then move. So that, that, that means a thousand twelve to the power of twelve. <laughs> so it's really scalable and you don't have, and you probably, you already know, you watching this video, know how to count to a Gogol and Theodian already, pretty much. Like, that's how easy it is. You already know the number system, pretty much. Except that you don't know what the, uh, the unit values are, but they're easy to learn too. Um, basically, I, I broke it up into three uh, three sets of things. So um, we have plosives uh, that represent sort of well. So I explain this. So like you know, a twelve is really good with thirds, right? And you may or may not know that a Theodian calendar, Theodian theme of recognition, uses fiscal thirds instead of fiscal quarters because for well, just because I have some reasons, but. I'll discuss them later, and well, they're not a hundred percent of the objective reasons, but they made sense to me. So we, um, because of that, I took the twelve and I divided it by three, and I created four, and so I had four slots basically. And I, I did try it with dividing by four too, so I'd have three, four times three slots, but it worked better with the four because what it does is actually it creates a lot of uh, r relation between the numbers and makes it very apparent. So, um, for example. All the uh, even numbers have either a liquid or a nasal. They sound pretty similar, and um, so like, and it, it creates this interesting rule that two two liquids always equal a nasal. So uh, L or la or li, re, and we will always equal like a ni or a ni or a mi. Uh, so if we're gonna add two li's, so li ko li, uh, ko being add, so like. Because we don't use valors in any of the numbers, so the valors became the operators, which makes sense because someone suggested somewhere on a random forum that <laughs> well, I think it was in an article somewhere. I don't think it wasn't like academic literature, I don't think, but I think it linked to it. But anyways, K is a little more active feeling, so I was like, okay, K shall be the operators. So ko is plus and ku is minus. And it's just a front back vowel. It's, uh, it's a very common theme in Theodian. O would be bigger, and so it's adding. And then U is smaller, so it's subtracting. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, Lu, uh, Li, Ko, Li makes Ni. Two plus two equals four. Um, or you could mix it with another na with another liquid, two and um, six. Um, so Li Ko Ri makes Ni. Uh, two and six make eight. So it's made another nasal. Or we could even do it with ten. So uh, ten would be We. So, li ko a uh, we uh, is uh, me, or well, not me. It basically, it would be te, but it'd be te me. If you want the me being optional, me being the zero. Um, so yeah, like I said, two liquids always makes a nasal, and there's some other rules like that too, and it's really cool. And it's it's and like they don't have to learn this because just by knowing this number system, they automatically know that those two things go together. And like if you put it in a chart, there's every four numbers, it's, it's going to line up perfectly. You're always going to have nasals in this column, always going to have fricatives in this column, always going to have liquids in this column. It's just pretty pretty great. And I guess W isn't exactly a liquid. It's more, I guess it's really the approximate column, but I like calling it liquid just because liquid sounds more approximate than approximate to me as anyhow. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. So, um, if I were going to say 121,023 in Theodian, I would say uh, tale titu Or I would say da de li du le si, because Theodian doesn't contrast voicing and it's easier just to voice them all. But yeah, if I was emphasizing, I do like voice this one. So like I said, very easy. <laughs> like you can really uh, get your numbers out and people can get them in their short term memory faster and more easily than English where there's timing out and it's uh, I'm really quite happy with them at this point. I don't have a good way to write them yet though. I don't know how I'm going to get the script to work out but uh, I think I'll be able to figure it out. I mean I've done stuff, I've figured stuff out like this before. Um, so, but if you, and, if, and I also I need to consider how I'm going to do negatives. I might do sign digit, sign value integers or whatever the correct term for a negative numeral is. Um, which is basically I'll have a special number for negative one or a special number for negative two, etc. Um, 
but I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. I may just use the minus sign. <gasps> and of course, the negative marker won't be negative 1. I don't know why something so common would be negative and not just neg. Neg 1. Neg 1 is so much easier to say than negative 1. Silly English. But, um, so yeah, if you, I'm still th thinking about that. Like I said, I'm working on the script and some other aspects of it. And, um, well, I guess I didn't give you an example of what things work to the side of the radix point. So the radix point, which you call the decimal point, but it's the, uh, you know, like, decimal point is only what it's called sometimes in decimal. We're using decimal, so we're going to call it the radix point. So, like, like I said earlier, um, so everything to the left of the radix point, like, left for you is right for me. Okay, uh, to the left of the radix point, as we learned, uh, a, e, a, 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 e, a, a, e, a, um, but everything to the right of it is just a. Um, and I thought about doing a couple of different things, maybe using comma separation down there. But I mean, we, we don't we, we get along just fine in English, doing 3.14159, and 7933283. And I, you know, I might make it maybe where I'll have some place down there. But at this time, it's just a, uh, and a uh is what it is. And I experimented somewhat with u and versus u, uh, but I'll, I'll work on that. But for now, it's just uh. So if you're going to do 3.14, oh, you'd have C, Poont, uh, uh, fuck yawn. I don't know if Poont will be the word for period, but for now, it's just Poont. So, um, C, Poont, um, ta, na, 3.14. Uh, C, Poont, ta, na. Um, so yeah. So if you like this video, you can click like and leave a comment. And actually, if you ha and I really, I really appreciate if any of you guys have any ideas or critiques, to um, just let me know. I like leave a comment, or if it's a longer one, a uh, longer critique or whatever, please post a video response or send me a message. Um, any way that this can be improved, I, I would love to do that. So um, thank you for watching. Um, I'll get the other parts of this video, of oh, the original 30 minute video thingy. I'll, I'll make a link to it later, it's maybe, possibly. Um, and yeah. Have a great night, I'll see you. Members of the Audience.